Hello and welcome to the fourth part of the vacuum tube Tesla coil build. Today some improvements and finally some tests, so stick around and skip if you might get bored. So I have decided to make a new toroid, as you can see it looks pretty messy right now, I'm slowly putting layers of uh, fabric with uh, some cement on it, I think it's cement in English anyway, as you can see I've put the second layer on and it rolls well kind of so let's smooth it a bit with some sandpaper the cloth is starting to stick out a bit but i thought that adding would would be a good idea since it improves the overall structure here's it's here it is sanded a little bit more uh, but i think it won't do without any filler so we have to add filler as you can see now it is with filler uh, and it is significantly more smooth and and bright uh, because the filler is white and uh, also uh, here's the smaller toroid and I have started working on that uh, the top layer is with uh, with filler and the bottom one isn't now the bigger one has been uh, significantly smooth once again but uh, it isn't quite uh, perfect yet and uh, back to the small one it has been covered with aluminum tape and as you can see the washer is pretty big so it won't be smashing the cardboard because it has a pretty big surface area so i can clamp it down just like this pretty nicely and it is indeed looking pretty sweet a lot more sturdy than the previous version but i would like the bigger one to be finished so here it is some more sanding and uh, this is kind of problematic because there was some really high spots with the first layer of cement but with a lot of work and just a lot of time put into it it has come to look like this as you can see it is extremely smooth it is extremely nice uh, this is the final version i won't be putting more layers because that will just it, it was like 10 layers anyway so this is the big one with uh, aluminum tape and it looks sweet and this is how it looks with the top load pretty nice indeed next i decided to test if the transformer that failed previously was indeed the cause of the loud bang that happened and the arc over i wanted to see if it has arced over internally all right so i have grabbed this transformer from the basement the one that failed previously and uh, I uh, have uh, plugged it in okay, my, with my Variac to which I finally added a soft start lovely little circuit that is and uh, it has a filter of course and some strain relief with zip ties anyway uh, what I'm hoping to prove is that this thing actually arcs over at a certain voltage level there's, uh, there's uh, for example a dark spot here which is probably difficult to spot well, there it is. Yeah, you can see it. And I am hoping to see arcing there. Uh, and that will prove that this thing is messed up. So I'm going to power it through my Variac. So we crank up the voltage until we hopefully see something. I scratched away some of the wires and as you can see there's clearly an arc happening here and I I guess that as we dig deeper into this coil there's gonna be just more and more spots where an arc over has happened so I'm gonna do that now it's gonna be pretty la laborious so here's the core after disassembling the wire completely and it has very very severely arced over as you can see and here's the wire that I took out and here is how I use the core afterwards and I might show that project later in a different video I just got back from the fair and I'm pretty excited because this is what I bought. This is a 6kV DC big friggin capacitor. As you can see it's quite frosted on the top. It's got some silicon on here. I will remove that in no time. And uh, we will have the, uh, the people that sold me this uh, wanted just um, <coughs> five bucks for it so it's kind of suspicious but this doesn't seem to be bulging this doesn't seem to be dented anywhere it just seems a bit rusted on top and the connections are nasty but other than that it seems in a great condition so i'm gonna 
try restoring it and then we're gonna test if this works and if it does it's gonna be an absolutely great capacitor for the doubler in my vacuum tube Tesla coil so let's get to it okay so I have mined into these connections just enough to uh, well, for this one to be pretty much done and for this one to be connectable too this is all the silicone that got out and this is my meter I'm gonna measure the capacitance of this see if it's off by a big long shot and it's not as you can see it's not it's right bang on pretty much uh, which is great I'm very glad to see that by the way this this is colored actually let's me let me just get this a proper shot this is a bit more reddish than this so does this mean this is a polarized cap in the end it states 6 kvdc but I think that's a paper oil kind of capacitor type of deal I'm not sure really Either way, since this is red, this is black, I'm gonna connect it as if this was the plus and this was the minus. Alright, so here's the capacitor, here's some calculus which is a lot more boring. So the capacitor is uh, cleaned up pretty nice. As you can see all the connections are clean, this one is indeed red, this one is black. It's a heavy chunk. Uh, let's maybe weigh it, let's see how much it weighs. Alright, so here you can see, let's put it on. Was to just a bit more than 2 kilograms. Alright, so I took this cap to my garage and we've got a testing jig. I'm running voltage from this auto transformer into the transformer, then through the normal doubler circuit. And we've got a resistor connected to one of the sides of the cap. And the wire is just hanging in here because it is kind of live during this operation. And uh, we've got a fuse here, a microwave fuse, uh, just in case this cap decides to short or the sudden this fuse will blow instead of this capacitor going bang and that would be pretty bad. So let's uh, give it a go, just making sure everything is alright. Alright, it should be good. Okay, uh, so we are live. Two hundred volts on the input. So as you can see, this cap stores energy all right. It hasn't blown yet. I'm gonna get it to uh, the full mains voltage on the primary, and and then uh, I will call it uh, a day. It's gonna be a okay, charged to full potential, so to speak. All right. So now this cap is at six kV. I'm gonna carefully grab the plus six kV, and I'm gonna handle. 6,000 volts in my hand, which is quite a lot for my puny self. Alright, now let's discharge it. Alright, we are discharging alright. Okay, so we are done. So now I just put it into the device and mounted it on this little table and that's how it looked. And then I forgot to record this step entirely, but I made this whole new grid leak assembly that looks really nice. One of the sides is held up with a metal plate that serves as ground and the other one is made with bakelite. This time I also used smaller threaded rods, so the whole thing is a lot lighter and just better designed and I am very pleased with it. So now it's time for testing. I brought this thing to my garage so I could safely test it at full power without having to worry about my home held electronics and other things and well lightning hitting the wall or something else and potentially shocking somebody or even the electromagnetic interference reaching into the neighbor's house and you know tinkering with their stuff. I wouldn't want that to happen. Uh, that's not very likely, but maybe, you know, it's high power stuff. Anyway, so I traveled with it to my garage and with the friend of a, uh, with the help of a friend, we managed to take it there and not break it in the process. Here it is standing and as you can see something changed. That is that we have lifted the top plate with the coils above the chassis because I suspect that the chassis acts as a shorted turn to the primary of the coil which is a very very bad thing for a Tesla coil to have so 
it will be much better like this, where the shorter turn of the chassis is far more decoupled from the primary. And well, the thing proves to be a lot more reliable now than it was before. So uh, actually that was right. And now it's time for some tests. And of course we had a lot of problems with uh, overcoupling and uh, arcing over from the primary to the secondary. Luckily not the secondary being damaged, just the primary, which is a lot easier to repair. Uh, so I will be trying to rewind the primary and see what is up. Also the filament transformer is going to be remade. But I'm going to talk about that a little later and I'm going to let you just enjoy the arcs now. So next what I wanted to do was to make a new filament transformer for the thing so I grabbed this core that I had lying around but sadly it turns out that it was damaged. The primary winding on it was damaged and it arced over very violently and uh, <laughs> the core was pretty much useless now because as you can see there's a pretty big gaping hole in the winding. But luckily I had another core <clears throat> that was in a pretty good condition and this one didn't arc over when I first fired it up so next I decided to make the soft start circuit for it and this is a two channel soft start circuit. I've also increased the clearance between tracks so it wouldn't arc over in any case which is still a very unlikely scenario but, but just in case that was ever to happen and it would sh it should be much safer. Next I made this electronic sandwich out of the soft start and a rectifier circuit which I also made and this thing is now ready to be put on. There's a ton of decoupling happening on that side because that's the uh, rectifier for the filament of the tube and I'm afraid that might there might be some high frequency noise coming back into it and destroying it possibly. Anyway, uh, the radiator is pretty big, but um, after I mounted it and tested it, it turns out that it was getting too hot still, so uh, what I did is I just mounted a little fan on it. And this is the setup, it's pretty janky at the moment, some wires need to be shortened and just trimmed to proper length. I will do that, but uh, for now it works. And after a bit more tinkering, I'm proud to announce that I've shortened the bolts mounting the, the fan and I've properly mounted the wires and then I have uh, uh, filed down the aluminum piece holding the fan so that it lets all the air through that the fan might need, which are just small things, but I mean, <laughs> they really make me happy. It's, it's just neat. Anyway, this video got pretty long already, so all, all the new updates are going to happen in a new video, and uh, I think it's gonna be the part where all the tests happen, because this coil is almost ready. Uh, so yeah, all that will happen in the next video. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.